Welcome back everybody. So I actually shot two other videos and the one I was kind of waiting to finish until I got a picture of my Halloween costume. And then the other one was like a 15 minute rant about something. So I decided that I'm just gonna combine them all together with the new stuff and do one longer video because I'm hoping, hoping that I can uh, state things more clearly and concisely, consecutively, concise? I wanna get my point across very concise. I wanna make a concise point. I don't know how to use that word properly. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the first thing. Uh, today, I went and did a small grocery shopping because uh, my main my main ride, my aunt, uh, is going out of town for two weeks. So I do a little bit of grocery shopping, stock up on things that I don't have like apples, uh, canned milk, uh, got some, uh, just got some different things that catch up, you know, just just things that were missing from the house that, you know, would be nice to have. But while I was out, uh, I had everything together to get my driver's permit, so I went and took the test, got my driver's permit. Now you're probably thinking like, dude, you're like somewhere around 30 years old. Why ain't you like have a driver's license? Well, this is what happens in the world when, you know, the power's in the wrong place. This is what happens in the world when not everybody gets equal opportunity. This is what happens in the world when you have less of a support system than other people. And uh, there were many times throughout my life that I had my permit, but didn't have the means to get my license, like a, a functional vehicle or a practice. So at this point, I drove for over four years with or without a license. And uh, only thing I really want to brush up on is parallel parking because in my town, in most of the towns I've been at, parallel parking is like not necessary. Uh, it's not that I can't do it. I have done it. I just, that's something I want to brush up on because I know it's on the test. And uh, like I said, not, not super worried about it, but it is, uh, I, I should have my license, you know. Now it's not, I have problems with that, of course. Like, I don't completely enjoy handing over what little money I got for somebody to, you know, add it to their Porsche collection. Or, you know, because you know, they, they say, like, it goes to, like, fixing the roads. And I can show you the roads at my place, around my place. And I don't think there's very much being fixed. Unless it's something, like, important. Like, we had a water line break. That that uh, that took precedence. That was something they had to fix. So, they actually fixed that. But, it's not something that happens very often. So, yeah. I got my permit. I'd show you for confirmation, but it has all my personal information on it. So, you just have to take my word for it. I already drove today. I uh, drove my aunt's car back home. It's like 20 miles, nothing crazy. Uh, still get ever so slightly anxious, but that'll that'll die over time. I haven't drove in like five years, so you know it's a uh, it's a bit of a yeah no. So got to get my sea legs back. Uh, next, I wanted to discuss something in, I made another video where I ranted for like 15 minutes, and I kind of want to talk about it because I discussed it today with my grandmother and my aunt in two separate times, and of course, the one's like, oh, I hope you're wrong, and the other one's like, I didn't think about it that way, but now that you say it out loud, that kind of, uh, that kind of sounds pretty legit, so... So, uh, I started off my video by saying, like, this is how smart I am, you know? But just listen and you can, you can, uh, determine for yourself. So, I, uh, through my experiences in the world, and my experiences with family, and friends, and dealing with death and people you care about, 
you uh you kind of see trends what people do when there's uh money at stake or or something for free that they can get you kind of kind of see trends and it happens all the time whether anybody wants to admit it or not usually when somebody dies somebody gets screwed somewhere it's usually it's usually just how it works so uh recently i uh, First, you know how I'm always saying, like, you don't know, you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I deal with. You know what I tell you, and you know what little things you see. But I'm gonna, I'll try to explain. So, for about five years, I've basically been the gardener, the, the pack mule, the emotional support animal, the surveillance system, uh, the muscle, uh, you know, what, if there was a job that needed done, I was the one doing it, and I was getting little to no money, uh, my, oh, they did something, what did they do, they messed up my trail, I don't like change, <laughs> but, uh, they, anyways, uh, so, um, you know, I've been doing all that, and, and me and my aunt was talking, and I was like, you know, all she's paying for, for me being there, is what little bit of electricity bill it gets run up. Because the, the cost of the house doesn't change if there's more than one person living in it. The amount of water you use can, can fluctuate, and, uh, and they really screwed this up, didn't they? <coughs> it smells bad, too. Uh, the amount. I wonder why they, they. I wonder why they did this. I wonder if it's just to be a jerk, or if they had an actual reason. All right. Anyways, so the amount that she was paying for me to be there, you know, was barely double digits. All right, and I was doing, you know, ninety percent of the manual labor for next to no money. I'm not saying she never paid me anything, because I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a liar. And uh, she I, she would throw me a buck or two here and there. She'd pay for things for me here and there. But I can assure you, if she was going to pay somebody on the outside to do the work that I was doing, you know, she she would be paying easily 25 times more easily you know you're talking 30 or 40 bucks to cut the grass and weed whack maybe it might even be more not to mention trimming the bushes shoveling the snow carrying in the groceries you know just just all the little things taking out the trash even if you pay some kid to do it for you five bucks a week you know, she's paying me nothing. So, so, you know, it, it adds up. Uh, but that's, and I know these are only words. I can't really prove it. You just got to kind of take my word for it. And I mean, if I was actually getting paid for all the work I do, I probably wouldn't dress like this. And I probably wouldn't complain about, you know, shopping Goodwill clothes and stuff, which isn't that big of a deal because shopping Goodwill clothes isn't, you know, I wouldn't be scrapping metal in the middle of the woods if I was getting paid. Like, maybe on weekends I'd do it anyway because I kind of enjoy it. But if I was getting money, I wouldn't have been spending all spring, you know, backpacking 30 pounds on my back just to make a couple bucks. But anyways, so she gets, my pat passed away. Well, let's start with my dad. My dad passed away. I got a gun, and I got a couple little things, and my brother ended up taking the little things that I got. It was a, a lighter that was a stripper that lights up. That was kind of cool. That ended up vanishing. And a couple other little things like a necklace and stuff, which I don't wear necklaces, so I didn't care too much. I wanted the lighter because at the time, he didn't smoke. I did smoke, and I thought the lighter was kind of cool. I was never a big strip club fan. I always said, you know... Why well, pay for something you can't take home with you? But, yeah, no. Anyways. So, I basically got a gun out of that. 
And then when I had all this legal BS, uh, they took my guns. So I don't even have that anymore. When my pap passed away, I got nothing but his old laptop. And you guys know anything about my gaming series, that laptop isn't all that great. So you're talking like a $400 laptop. That was, you know, maybe $200 when I got it. You know, it's four, maybe four or $500 brand new. <coughs> so, and everything of value in the house is gone. That I could find anyway. So, it, so my, my point is, everything I'm doing is basically for nothing. I have nothing to show for it, and I'm building no future. All right? So, you understand why I'm kind of angry. Now, you're probably thinking, here, here's the age-old argument that just infuriates me even more. Why don't you leave? What am I going to do? I have next to no money, no car, no job. I'm, I'm not getting any younger. What the, what, what the heck am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Leave where? You're talking like, you know, doing what I plan to do in spring. It's not a good thing to do. It's not the smartest option. So, it's basically, I'm trapped. I'm trapped to be a free babysitter. And there's nothing I can do about it. Until I backpack away. Which is BS. But now let's, uh, let's move on. So anyways, here's my theory, alright? So my brother and his girlfriend are apparently splitting up, right? Uh, fiance. They've been together for over 10 years, or about 10 years, or they've been together for a while. They have three kids, and they have a house, right? All of a sudden, they're, going to, they're thinking about splitting up. Now, the theory is that she's cheating on him, right? Now, that theory has been thrown around a couple of times, because I, I've, I've heard it a couple of times, that they, 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 they thought she was sleeping around behind his back. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it kinds, tends to be like... Uh, the theme of this place. Um, I think almost every girlfriend I had... Actually, I think every girlfriend I had in this town cheated on me. That's why I don't date people from here. But... Anyways. It, it's, uh... That, that's the running theory, right? Here's my theory. So, good old grandma. She's been going to the hospital more and more often. Getting older, frailer, you know, getting sick more, whatever. Whatever's going on with her which I'm not completely sure about because she's going into the hospital and they're not really finding anything wrong besides, like, a urinary tract infection and she's 80 years old. So, if that's all it is, you know, that's pretty good for an 80-year-old woman. Anyways, my theory is they're faking the breakup so he can have the sob story that he lost his wife, he lost his fiance, he lost his kids... He lost his house, and now he's living out of his car and working, you know, keeping his job. So, it gives him that little sob story, right? So, if and when good old grandma needs to be, you know, permanently hospitalized or ends up dying, you know, he would have a better shot at getting the house than me, because I don't have a job. My theory is, once the metaphorical poop hits the fan... They'll end up, and I'm, and I'm gone whenever I'm leaving, whether it's, you know, in spring or however it happens, whenever I'm gone and out of the picture, they'll mysteriously, you know, bury the hatchet and get back together, sell one of the two houses, and then they have, you know, X amount of money to go do whatever they want with, and I'm screwed again. So, that's my theory. Uh, could I be wrong? Maybe. I mean, it's possible. But, you know, a snake is a snake. Whenever my dad passed away, my mother, my brother, and his live-in wife, or whatever she would be, got everything. I got a gun and a few little trinkets, which I guess I'm probably lucky I even got that. When my pap passed away, I got an old laptop. Everything else is unaccounted for. The, the story going around is everything, every penny of the $10,000 life insurance policy, uh, whatever else he had went towards the funeral. Okay, whatever, you know. It's, 
highly unlikely. I know funerals are expensive, but, you know, it wasn't like a super high-end ceremony, you know. So I, f I feel that there is quite a few things unaccounted for. Same with that, when my pap passed away, she got his pension, which doubled the amount of money she was getting every month that she's alive. So, long story short is, in all of these scenarios, it seems like everybody's making out, except for me. And it, it's really annoying, because I'm the one doing all the work, I'm the one there, I'm the one that deserves it, but I'm not getting it. And it, it's, it, it's super, it's super annoying. This has happened like four times in my life. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not assuming that it's going to ever change. You know, as long as I can be screwed, I'm probably going to be screwed. So, butterfly. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just, that's just how, that's the other theme of this, this place, you know. The reason, or the, the talk, when we had the conversation, the reason is she wants to sign the house over to me, right? She wants to sign it over to me, but she doesn't want me to have all that debt. Apparently, it's like a couple thousand dollars on the house. Now, here, here's, here's the problem with that theory. One, it's going to cost more for me to find a house or rent a place than it would be to just pay the mortgage. That, that's, that's the problem with theory. That's the first theory problem. The next problem is, if she really cared that much, you know, a big portion of the money she spends on lottery, the big portion of the money she spends on useless kitchen gadgets, you know, that could have probably paid off most of the house. <sighs> the missing money from, you know, dad's funeral and the missing money from pap's funeral could probably pay off the house. Am I wrong? You know, you guys decide. You know, you think about it. So, that, that, that's, that's the big theory. Like, oh, I want to sign the house over to you, and I want you to have it when I'm gone. But I don't want you to have the debt. I think she's saying that the debt is 14 grand. Where are you going to get a house for 14 grand? You're, you're not. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be in this place. And more than likely, more than likely, I'd probably find a way to sell the house, use the money to pay off the mortgage, take what's left to get a smaller house somewhere out in the boonies. That, that would probably be, that would probably be my plan of action if, uh, if it actually went through that way. But like I said, it's not going to go through that way because... I'm willing to bet she's in on the scheme. And uh, I think uh, it, it's causing me a bit of drama, in which I, I highly dislike. But, you know, that's life in a small town. Because I ran my theory past my grandmother, and I ran my theory past my aunt. And then I came downstairs to get ready to go for this hike, and they were talking about everything I said on the phone. And she said... Well, I'll lay out the bills and, you know, I can prove everything. And I'm like, prove what? That I'm right? Or, you know, just prove that no matter what I know, it doesn't matter. Because, you know, I'm going to be screwed and everybody else is going to make off like a bandit. <laughs> I don't think I'm wrong about the money situation. Because uh, she, gets, she gets a free check every month just for being old and my pap. On top of that, most of the heating oil is paid for through the government. We both get food stamps so the food's taken care of. The only thing that could change the amount of money because I'm there is the electric bill and the water bill. Because the storage bill stays at $17 a month constantly. It's a static payment. So, only, only thing that's, that could have fluctuated would be the electric bill... And the water bill, which, water maybe, the electric bill I seen myself because I'm the one that has to walk down and pay it, and it went down. 
since since I've been there because Pap's gone and a lot of those machines ain't being used anymore like uh the oxy oxygen machine isn't on 24 hours a day so the electric bill actually went down like almost $15 so she by me saying she's paying double digits at the best for me to be there it might even be an exaggeration but that's my theory that's my idea I and, and it's another one of those situations where I have no way out what am I gonna do try to talk to a lawyer <laughs> you know he, you need money to get a lawyer and that's not something I have she uh when I was walking out the door she's like you're never here for me well not like Jeff is or yeah yeah or, you're never here for me not like your brother is and I'm like I live here I'm doing all the work what do you mean I'm not here <laughs> it's it's disgusting it's absolutely disgusting uh, the best thing I got is, you know, I pray every day. I don't pray because I'm not religious, but hypothetically, metaphorically, I pray every day that they all get what they deserve. Because if anybody deserves to be flogged in the streets, it's a scumbag that, you know, would repeatedly use somebody's death to take things from their own family when you know that they're more deserving. All right. That's my, that's my theory. I know, uh, I know my nephew, my brother's son, watches my videos sometimes. So if you see this, you know, I'm not looking to cause a fight, but, uh, and I know how dramatic you are, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty, uh, you might call me cynical, but I think this is a, I think this is a reasonable train of thought considering the situations I've been in. Why are people doing this, man? All right, made it through. I, uh, yeah, it's just you, you might you might say I'm full of crap. You might say I'm cynical. You might say I'm a liar. You can go right ahead. I'm not the one, or you know, I'm the one that got in a bad legal situation and basically imprisoned in a town I hate, taking care of you know somebody I'm not particularly fond of for basically free. And by the end of it, you know, I'm going to be SOL. So the five years I worked at a gas station, basically stolen from me. The five years I worked helping my grandparents, you know, I, I, I can't see it going much different. All right, so on a lighter note, uh, I finished my Halloween costume. I finished my, my jack-o'-lantern carving. I tried to make pumpkin fudge. And I tried to do it the, the easy way, but I wanted it to be more pumpkin than sugar. So I added too much pumpkin puree and then the, the fudge wouldn't set up and stay stiff. It was just like a sticky, globby mess. So I actually put it in a piping bag and use the fudge as a frosting for cookies I made today and that was really good um, <coughs> I, the only cookie mix they were selling was uh, chocolate chip cookie so I had to sift out the chocolate chips because I didn't want chocolate chips with my fudge because I thought it would you know take away from the greatness of what the fudge is so yeah, I, I sifted all the chocolate chips out and I made cookies and I wanted to make them in like a cup shape 
but I knew already when I made the dough that it was the kind of dough that you, you put into a ball and it spreads out. So making it into a shape just wasn't going to work. But uh, I do plan, I only used about half the fudge, so I do plan to uh, try and, I do plan to try to like make my own cookie dough and try it again. That's, uh, I, I just feel that I can make better than the store can, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a shot probably next time. Uh, which I don't know when and if I'm gonna do that because I'm starting the rice diet a bit early. I'm actually thinking about starting it tomorrow or the next day. To, uh, deer. I want to try to cut a couple of pounds before the Halloween dance. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but I can see my little, I can see my little gut poking out with my costume on and I'm not too happy about it. I think uh, two weeks of the rice diet would either cut it back or take it away completely. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference before the first Halloween thing I got going on, but it should be, it should be a difference for the second one, in theory. <laughs> uh, I think that basically covers everything. I just really wanted to, I really wanted to go public, as public as I can. I wanted to get the word out there the best I can about what's going on, because when it happens, at the very least, I have my intelligence I can gloat about. <laughs> At the very least, when it happens that I get screwed out of everything again, I could be like, well, you know, I can't say I didn't see it coming. Uh huh, the sun. Hi. Uh, she, she's like, I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. I'm like, I don't think you do. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is, but something just. Something just strikes me as, you know, I was sent here to be the village idiot and, you know, everyone's going to profit the best they can off of what they can. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully I am wrong. Hopefully... Hopefully I am wrong. Oh my gosh, more deer. You guys probably can't see them, but there's one there. There's one there. But, uh... They look like two doe. I'm not sure if there's any hunting season right now. I'm not exactly wearing bright colors, but... Eh... I don't worry about it too much. Somebody is shooting, but it sounds like a 22. So I'm thinking they'd probably be hunting squirrel. Now that sun is killer. I'm gonna go till I get around this blind spot. I uh, guess it's a good time to take the edge off and start celebrating my uh, my long overdue driver's permit. I, w I wasn't gonna drink tonight, but I thought like, you know what? If I don't do it tonight, I might not drink till, you know, next week. So, right now I have a couple of bucks left. I broke into my... You know, here, here's, here's one of those examples, right? I broke into my October money and to, buy, uh, to pay for my permit. But then she paid me back. The five, it was five dollars, like it wasn't like no astronomical amount. But then she paid me back because she's like, oh, I did say I'd pay for it. So, you know, that was nice. that, was, that was cool. That was cool. And you look at it from one point of view as like she didn't have to do that at all. And which you could or maybe be right. But it's not like... It's not like the stuff I do isn't worth that little bit of money. You, you know? Anyways...
There we go. That's the ticket. So. So I decided to, uh, for the first Halloween thing, I'm probably not drinking. So I figured, you know, if I spend a majority of the money on the second Halloween thing, then we'll, we'll be all right. And right now it's like, what, October 5th? So it's 10 days to the next Halloween thing, or the first Halloween thing. And it's like 23 days to the last Halloween thing. So if I don't drink at the next one, which I ain't really planning on it, I'll have over $60 to drink at the next one. So, which should be more than enough because, you know, it'd be more than likely I'll buy a six pack and drink a six pack before I go to the bar. So I'm not spending a stupid amount of money. You know, I ain't buying two beer for the same price as a six pack. Instead, I'll drink an entire six pack and then just buy two beer. So then, you know, I get that social interactment without spending, you know, a stupid amount of money. quiet time. Moment of silence for my for my over annoyance. So what I say what I say in these videos I either have proof or I am you know absurdly sure. Like we're talking, like, I don't say anything unless I'm, like, 95% sure that, you know, that's, like, a really good percentage of, you know, what might be going on. And if I ever say something, I usually preface it by saying, oh, well, you know, there's an 80% chance, there's a 60% chance, there's a 75% chance, you know. <coughs> I usually, <coughs> excuse me. I usually say ahead of time, you know, that, that, you know, I have, I wouldn't say it if I wasn't that sure, if I, if I didn't have so many experiences that kind of played out the same way. It, it's like, okay, uh, they don't sponsor me and I wouldn't take a sponsor from them if they offered to pay me a million dollars, but, uh, do you ever play Raid Shadow Legend? Le Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure everybody has tried it at least once, because they spammed that crap for like three months. So, and they're still spamming it once in a while. So, if you ever played Raid Shadow Legends, and you thought, well, this ain't really for me, so I'll try this different one, and you play maybe six or ten of them, and they're all different, but you boil it down, and they're all actually exactly the same. So that's kind of like how the story goes in my life. You know, it, the ending is the same. The, the way you get there is basically the same. It's just, you know, different pictures and uh, different music. Maybe a, maybe a small plot twist here or there, but the the lead up the training and the execution is pretty much the same that's how things go in my life for for these here bad these here particularly bad scenarios you know it's like you know i've seen it all before <laughs> you, you know i'm not it's not that surprising to me and that that's why i say you know maybe maybe i am being cynical Maybe they really are splitting up. Maybe. Maybe maybe it really has nothing to do with good old grandma's recent hospital visits. Maybe not. Maybe it has nothing to do with, you know, the big dollar signs flashing. Maybe not. But here's what I know. If whenever the house got remodeled, 
it was worth hey look a banana chopper at uh whenever the house got remodeled it was worth approximately i think 80 grand on the market now property values go up but without the house being properly maintained i don't know how much it would have went up so in its condition i in its condition and without taking inflation into consideration inflation consideration without taking inflation into consideration it's uh you know i'd ballpark it you know a high 70 grand you know just not even like even if property value went up and maybe maybe it's 90 maybe it's 100 and let's say she's telling the truth that it's 14 grand on the mortgage if he swoops in takes the house sells it pays off the mortgage with the money and even if he sells it low so if he sells it low at like we'll say he sells it at my low ballpark estimate of 70 grand he gets a free 56 grand and i did all the work like it, it, it's super daunting it's super annoying i was ridiculously sure i've seen a person oh well Check out the view. I also, I don't want to leave out anything because if this actually ever becomes something, I, I don't want to leave out all the facts. Uh, so I was on probation, as you know, I'm off probation now. And it was, uh, I can't remember how much it was. It was like two grand or something. I had to pay a court cost or some crap, apparently. Uh, apparently she paid it. Apparently. Uh, is it true? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. But to give this a completely fair assessment is I'm off probation, I'm not in jail, and, you know, it's, as far as I know, it's paid in full. Uh, still, I mean, you spread two grand over five years. You know, when I was working as a gas station employee, I was making like 30 grand, 30 grand a year, give or take, working 40 hours. So, so a couple of grand's a drop in the bucket. But I did want to... Like I said, I, I want to try to do this as fluid as possible, and I want to give as much information as possible, because I want, I want people to look at this as fairly as possible. I don't want you to think that I'm just some spoiled, stupid kid, or some spoiled, stupid adult, I guess. <laughs> you know, I don't... I want you to know... Like, like, I, like I told my aunt, alright, she has a problem with the way I look at things, you know, she doesn't like, she doesn't like that I'm, how I talk about how bad everything is, and I don't completely blame her, but once I explained it to her, I'm like, that is why I feel the way I feel, that is why I look at the world the way I look at the world, and now she seems a little more understanding of my, what is it, what do they call it, callousness? Would callousness be a, be a, be a, be the right word for it? Cynical? Now here comes a motorbike. Helmets. But I think they were the two guys I went to school with. No, I wasn't a big fan of them. Wasn't, wasn't a big fan. Uh, the one was alright. The other one was just a straight up D-bag. But, yeah, now. That's, uh, that's high school for you. At least where I'm from. Uh... Now, what was I saying? I, I don't remember. I, I don't care. I, I, I just want... It, the easiest way to say it is I hope everybody gets what they deserve. Like, if it really is a ploy, and I'm right, I, I hope he gets punished appropriately. And, you know, and the same goes for good old Granny. If it's negligence on her part, stupidity on her part, greediness on her part, then I hope she, I hope she gets what she deserves. 
same with me. You know, if I if I really committed some atrocity, and I I just I hope we all get what we deserve. Right. I guess the rich the rich wouldn't stay rich if everybody got their piece of the pie, right? Oh. The leaves are starting to change. It's kind of pretty. I hope I don't miss it this year. Like, it kind of goes... In my area, it typically goes from green to dead. Uh, the last couple of years, I guess, climate change or... Or weird, just weird weather patterns... Instead of the leaves going dormant and slowly changing color, they just straight up die. Uh, so who are you voting for? Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind, that's state specific. I can't... Uh, I already gave away too much information today. You ain't getting no more. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. On one hand... On one hand, I'm out here enjoying what little beauty's left with a nice cold drink in my hand. And on the other hand, I'm waiting for the next catastrophe to bully my life into oblivion. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, you know, I got my, I got my driver's permit. I'm probably getting a phone. That's a double-edged sword. I don't really know if I want a phone, but if I have a phone that has a direct line to me, then it might be a bit easier for me to get a job. And not to mention it'd be a little safer for me to walk out here in the middle of nowhere, you know, if I had a way to call for help if something drastic happened. So, so yeah, I mean, baby steps, but... At least it's going in the right direction, I suppose. And right after Halloween, I plan to go get my license. Because be, uh, that means I'll get to celebrate Halloween. Not only will I get to celebrate Halloween, it'll give me a little time to, to brush up on my driving a bit. So, and if I get my license, then that's, that's kind of a permanent thing. Like, unless, of course, you know, something stupid happens where I get pulled over for some reason, but... I don't really drink and drive. I'm not I'm not saying I never drank and drove, but it's not something I it's not something I I'm reluctant to do it. So and the times I have done it, it wasn't like I was completely smashed. Uh, it wasn't like I was driving, you know, three states away. And I, and I know some people are like well, you know, drink drive, drunk driving is drunk driving, but you might be right, but at the same time, at least I, I'm reluctant. It's not something that, it's not something I would do if I thought there was another way. That tree is really pretty. It is kind of pretty, isn't it? Uh, all right, I'm at the public trail. We might talk again. All right, I'm gonna stew. I'm gonna stew in my anger, annoyance, and emotions, and try to try to see if I can see any more cutesy little animals and drink myself happy. I'm back. I missed a couple of things, of course, like I usually do. Uh, so I am going through with making wine this year. I'm going to do autumn olive wine and grape wine. I'm gonna do them separate. I was going to mix them together, but I'm pretty sure I have enough to make a quart or a liter of each. So, so I decided I will be I will be doing them separate. Uh, she goes to bingo tomorrow. That is the plan. Uh, I figured if it gets messed with or goes bad, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, it was still a good excuse to come out and pick berries. There are some berries. You know what those are? Uh, around here, we used to call them paint berries, but they're actually called poke berries. 
and I think it takes about 20 of them to kill you. Uh, they're poisonous. Uh, the berry itself, toxi toxicity, isn't all that high compared to the roots. If you were to boil the roots and drink it, or try to eat the root as is, uh, you you know, it wouldn't be long, you'd be dead. So, just a little piece of nature information. I was going to say that to you guys a while ago, but I never had the camera out when I passed the bush. <coughs> uh, another thing, another thing I wanted to mention, if you know who I am in real life, uh, there's a guy that, uh, he wrecked his dirt bike, and now he's in a wheelchair. I have mixed feelings about the situation, because, you know, it's not like... Okay, let me start by saying that I'm not friends with this guy. But he's never done anything particularly to offend me or hurt me, so... We've always had respect for each other. Uh, now he's in a wheelchair. And they're having a basket party for him on the 8th of October. If you have the extra time and money, you want to go support him and try to have your hand at uh, winning some cool stuff, you know, try to look it up. I can't give you too much information because I'm not trying to give away who I am on YouTube. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason I have mixed feelings on the subject is, you know, dude, dude got injured wrecking his dirt bike. You know, if you have a dangerous hobby, you shouldn't be looking for handouts when you get hurt. But, I mean, I guess you can say the same about me. I have a dangerous hobby of hiking in the woods all alone at all hours of the day and night. And if I got hurt and needed help... I'd probably try to get help myself, but it just, you know, he, he's, he's not exactly from a poor family, and his injury was recreational, so it, it makes me feel some sort of way, but like I said, I have respect for him because he has respect for me, and if he got the extra time and money and you like basket parties, you should go check it out. I'm, uh, I will not be attending, and it's not, has nothing to do with my feelings on the matter. Well, not really. I mean, I actually considered going because, you know, not too many people in this town that I can say that I don't want to stab, and he's, you know, he's okay guy, so. I, uh, I contemplated going, but, uh, my ride, my aunt is going to be out of town. My grandmother isn't going, so she isn't finding a ride to go. And I don't really have money. So, and you're probably like, oh, you're drinking. You have money. Like, no, like, this is, this is like all my money until uh, further notice, until Halloween. So, but if you're, if you know who I am in real life, there's a guy, wrecked his dirt bike, not a, not a completely crappy person in my in my opinion. And if you're looking for a day out and something to do and want to help a, 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 a semi good cause, I want to give a little publicity, you know. So I'm thinking uh, a lot of the stuff's gonna be like hunting, probably maybe BMX related kind of things. But I'm sure whatever baskets they get, they get. But uh, I did read on the thing that it was a little more outdoorsy uh i'm not a big fan of basket parties and i ain't got money so i more than likely will not be attending but maybe never know it is something to do and i don't hate the guy so so that's that uh is there anything else is there anything else i'll let you know how the wine turns out now, that'll take a few weeks uh, I plan to cook down the berries separately to kill any bacteria to minimize the odds of it going sour. So, you know, there's, uh, 
on wild berries, there's bacteria, wild yeast. You know, technically, I could try to ferment it as it is. But now that I froze it, it probably wouldn't work. But I end up boiling it and cooking it down so that uh, any outside contaminants are... I won't say... I won't say it's going to be a sterilized situation, but it'll minimize the odds. Like, I'm not going to boil the bottles and can it like a, like a try-hard, but I do want to minimize any chance of contamination to make a, make a good wine. So, uh, I said there's a little less than a gallon of each type of berry, so I think it can make a, a liter of each with a fair, fairly amount of ease. I mean, I don't want it to be super thick, and I'm going to strain it off. So if it's a little bit watery and lightens, lightened up a bit, that's, that's kind of all right by me. As long as I get an APV of like, I don't know. If I, if I can get an APV of like 14%, that I would be happy. If it gets, 14% would be high hopes. 10%, it is probably the more realistic. But, I mean, this is 8%, and this does an okay job. And when I do make wine, and I do knock it out of the park, it, uh, it's quite good. So, it, it usually does the job. Like, one bottle would be, like, the same as me drinking, like, two forties and a half. So, so it's not, a. as long as I, as long as I get it right, it should be acceptable. Uh, I think that uh, I think that'll do it. Now I know I'm gonna. I got about 25 minutes on this trail, so I might think of something else.